Let's start today's seminar. Today's speaker is Dr. Jayak Chang from Johns Hopkins University and University of Maryland. Uh, he will talk about concern on self interacting radiations from cosmological data. Please start when you're ready. Okay, thank you for inviting me again. And uh, I'm going to talk about this. And I know it's Friday afternoon and everyone is tired from the summer school. So I try to finish early. Okay, uh, so this is uh, based on my two paper uh, with my collaborators. Okay, I'm going to talk about radiations, and in other words, radiation is light relics. Relics means a species of particles uh, that is produced in the early universe and remains at late times, maybe until today. And light means uh, this species is relativistic uh, and and it's the, at the epochs provided by the CMB and BBN. They can be non-relativistic today. And of course, photons and neutrinos are the obvious examples uh, from the standard model for this radiation or light relics. And many BSM models predict uh, noble light relics. Uh, this noble light relics is often called dark radiations. So I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, radiation or light relics. And uh, most important physical quantity of this light relic is its energy density. So often the energy density of the light relic is parameterized with n effective, and which is uh, uh, n effective is the effective number of the uh, neutrino species. So if there's a just standard model, n effective is roughly three, but uh, bit, uh, because the neutrino decoupling time and then uh, the electron positron annihilation time is all there's a little overlap. So, in from the standard model, n effective we have is roughly 3.043. But if there's a, a dark radiation or here uh, denoted by rho x, then n effective can be larger than the standard model uh, value. And this larger n effective uh, uh, means we have the larger radiation in the early universe. And this changes uh, the CMB power spectrum. The two main feature of the larger N effective is the amplitude suppression, especially at small scales, and uh, there's a phase shift. However, N effective is not the only measure for the uh, radiation, because even for the same N effective, interacting and non interacting radiations have leave different imprints on observables most imp importantly for the power spectrum of the uh, cosmic microwave background. And this interacting uh, radiation becomes very popular recently because this has been proposed as a solution to the Hubble tension. So let me briefly review the Hubble parameter tension. We all know we live in an expanding universe and a natural question uh, to this expanding universe is what is the speed of the expansion? And to define this, uh, uh, we can uh, write the metric for expanding and homogeneous and isotropic universe, uh, which is described by FLRW metric as we all know. And here this gamma is a, a three space metric. And this A is a scale factor that describes the size of the universe. And we can define the Hubble parameter uh, uh, by time derivative of A over A, and this Hubble parameter describes the speed of the expansion. And we can measure uh, the Hubble parameter today by using Hubble's law, uh, which is Z equals to H0 times D. Here, Z is the, the redshift of a, uh, a source, and uh, H0 is Hubble parameter today, and D is the proper distance to the source. And if we uh, measure the redshift and the proper distance, uh, we can know the, the Hubble parameter today. Of course, this simple form is only uh, applied for the very late universe where Z is much smaller than one, but we can simply extend this to uh, general uh, Z. But anyway, to measure the Hubble uh, today, we do need to know the distance to the source. And there are two different ways to measure the cosmological distance. One way is from the luminosity distance and the other is from the angular distance. 
when we use the luminosity distance, uh, we need to have the, uh, the photon source that uh, the luminosity is known. So this is called a standard candle. So if we know a standard candle and if you measure a, a photon flux from the standard candle, and the flux is given by the known luminosity divided by 4 pi dl squared. Here, this dl is the luminosity distance, uh, which is given by a proper distance d uh, divided by a. One a comes from the distance, and the other a from the, uh, the redshift of the photon itself. So we need to have two a's, and if we define luminosity distance in this way, uh, we can get the uh, user uh, the flux equation. So this is one way to measure the uh, distance. And the other way is if we have a source, which is uh, the, its length is known, then we can use the angular distance. Then uh, the sine of the angle uh, is given by the known length divided by the angular distance. And here, angular distance is just uh, a times the proper distance because we have only one a uh, from the length. So this is this known length is called the uh, standard ruler. So by using two different uh, distance, uh, we have measured the uh, Hubble parameter today. And uh, this plot is the measurement. And here, these two uh, data points are from the only measurement, uh, which is from uh, CMB Planck and the other uh, BAO and BBN stuff. And these stuff are from the late universe. Uh, and um, all this late universe measurement uses the luminosity distance, while the only time uh, measurement uses the, uh, the angular distance. And depending on the data set, you can see the late early time universe and late time universe measurement has four to six sigma tension. This is a uh, famous uh, Hubble tension, Hubble parameter tension. And this may come from just uh, uh, systematics uh, from the mostly from the late universe, but this tension may be a hint for new physics. Okay, so where where can this new physics come in? Uh, our our calculations for the uh, this old universe and late uh, universe measure we use a standard candle and standard ruler, and when you calculate. Uh, the standard, the luminosity of standard candle and luminosity of the, uh, no, the length of the standard ruler, we use our known physics. But if there's a new physics comes in, then this uh, luminosity of the standard candle or uh, the length of the standard ruler might be different from what you expect. And the Hubble today is inversely proportional to the uh, luminosity or inversely proportional to the length of the standard uh, ruler. So if our knowledge to the uh, candle or ruler is wrong, then we predict different Hubble uh, today. So for uh, all the early time measurement, we use the BAO scale as the standard ruler. And BAO stands for the Baryon Acoustic Oscillation, which is the, the density, uh, density perturbation propagation uh, from, with the photon baryon plasma. So in this plot, uh, these white dots are the overdense region at, at the beginning of the universe, just from the primordial uh, uh, power spectrum. And this dense uh, 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 overdense region propagates uh, with the uh, in the photon baryon plasma, and and so this propagates, and they actually stop propagating when the photon and baryon stop. Uh, stop coupling. So at the recombination, photons start to the uh, starts to free stream uh, from this uh, radius, and baryons just remains here. So actually, we can measure overdense uh, at this length scale. And this length scale, the radius of this sphere is called the BAO scale. And uh, to calculate this scale, we can just simply uh, integrate the sound speed over the proper time then we can get the uh, BAO scale, but in, by change of the variables we, in terms of A, then we can uh, integrate C as the sound speed of the photon baryon plasma over A square H. H is a Hubble uh, at that time uh, from zero, the beginning of the universe to the recombination. Then uh, this is our calculation for the BAO scale, and we use uh, this length 
as a standard ruler to get the Hubble parameter today from the CMD. And this, uh, this Hubble parameter is not the Hubble parameter today. This is only time Hubble parameter. So this Hubble parameter, we can just get from the Friedman equation where H square is proportional to the energy density. In the early universe, when the radiation is dominated, uh, this ra uh, rho radiation is parameterized with N effective. And of course, uh, to get the BAO scale, we assume N effective equals the standard model value. But if, what if this N effective is different from our uh, expectation? We, what if this N effective is larger than three? Then uh, we have the more radiation in the early universe, then which means uh, the Hubble in early universe is larger and that decreases the uh, RS, the BAO scale. Then Hubble today is inversely proportional to this RS. So if we have the additional radiation that increases rho, increases H, decreases RS, and eventually that increases the Hubble today. So if we have the additional radiation that can serve the, uh, that, uh, that may help to resolve the Hubble tension. So additional radiation decreases the RS then helps to solve the Hubble tension, but this is not the only effect from the additional radiation. If we have additional radiation, then that suppresses small, smaller scales and which conflicts with observation uh, today. However, there's a, a solution to this case. If inter uh, the radiation we have is actually interacting radiation, then this uh, interacting radiation has much smaller sound speed compared to the free streaming uh, radiation. Free streaming radiation, they just uh, the, the perturbation perturbation just propagates to uh, in 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 the velocity of speed of, of speed of the uh, light. But in the interacting radiation, sound speed is square root of uh, one of three one over three. So the uh, sound speed is actually smaller than it elevates the, uh, it, it, the interesting radiation doesn't suppress the small scale uh, as much as the uh, free streaming radiation. So if we have an interesting radiation, we can compensate these effects a little bit. So this can be the solution to the Hubble tension. So this, uh, this was uh, proposed in this paper and I call the crash paper. And this paper actually finds larger Hubble uh, today with CP interesting neutrinos by increasing N effective by a roughly order one. So I'm going to talk about uh, this paper uh, and review if uh, this paper is actually true. Sorry? BAU scale is measured in terms of the, uh, it, it, on the assumption of the lambda CDM. But if our universe is different from lambda CDM, then BAU is different. What we have measured is actually angle. Sorry? Okay. Sorry, can you repeat? H0, not, not H0. So our assumption, the main assumption is uh, the, the energy density in the early universe it's just standard model from the standard model. That's the main assumption. So any fact we could Test. Okay. So let me briefly review the effects of the self interacting radiation on CMB, especially CMB power spectrum. Uh, so this is our uh, CMB power spectrum, and I'm going to review how the uh, self interacting radiation changes this power spectrum. And to understand the interacting radiation, uh, we can first understand the effect of the free streaming radiation. 
So I'm going to take a neutrino as an example, then see how the how the free streaming uh, radiation neutrino changes the uh, uh, the power spectrum of the CMB. This is a schematic of the uh, mechanism. And if we have the free streaming radiation that develops the anisotropic stress, and this anisotropic stress uh, changes the gravitation potentials, and finally, this gravitation potentials changes the photon perturbation. So I'm going to review uh, step by step for this. And first, we do need to uh, define the neutrino perturbation. Uh, we can define neutrino perturbations in the user way, and we decompose this radiation. We decompose this uh, neutrino perturbation uh, with the Legendre polynomial. This is a user way. So this F nu L is Legendre decomposed the uh, neutrino perturbation. You can just know that. And the anisotropic stress is defined in this way, but you don't need to know this part, but you can just think uh, the anisotropic stress uh, is proportional to the second moment of the neutrino perturbation. This is uh, just uh, minus a, a half times the second moment of the neutrino perturbation. Then this is the Boltzmann equation for the anisotropic stress. And it's hard to understand this equation uh, just from this. So I show you the uh, Boltzmann equation for photons. This is a Boltzmann equation for photons for, for also for the second moment. So there's a, for the anisotropic for photons and the neutrinos. You may notice the only difference is this term. This is the interaction term and here tau prime is the interaction rate. And you can see uh, uh, this term if this term dominates, and if we can, if we can ignore the, uh, this second and third term, then this is just uh, exponential uh, suppression for this pi. It, this term gives the exponential suppression because this is negative uh, coupling times itself. Sorry. Uh, interaction between this radiation and anything else. For this photon, this is interaction rate, uh, rate between photon and the baryons, mostly hydrogen. So as long as it has scattered with something, then it, it comes in here. So in this case, uh, this interaction term suppresses this pi, which is an isotropic stress. So for photon case, an isotropic stress uh, cannot develop in the early universe. This anisotropic stress remains negligible uh, until photon and baryon decouples. However, for neutrino, there's no such terms. There's no suppression terms. So uh, for neutrino, anisotropic stress evolves freely. So this is the main difference between the free streaming particles and free streaming radiations and the interacting radiations. And Radiation or it can be anything, I mean, some non-standard radiation can also do the trick, same trick. Yeah, it can be any radiation. I, I'm giving an example of the neutrino and photons, but if you have some dark radiation, you can uh, write the same Boltzmann equation. And it has the, if it, the radiation has an interaction term, then you need to add something like this term. I, I'm going to talk about that in uh, more detail later. Okay. No, no. So I'm saying uh, when you're sol trying to solve the it's not problem by interacting radiation, Mm -hmm. So is it always have to be the neutrino or photon or, I mean, like neutrino or it can be anything else, which has no connection with neutrino, but mm -hmm. it has its own self interaction. Let's suppose you have some non-standard radiation, mm -hmm. which does not talk to anything else, mm -hmm. but it, it's only contributing to the radiation energy density and it has some self interaction. So can it also help to reduce? It's not. Yeah. Right. So that doesn't matter. As long as the, the radiation has interaction, it can be with themselves, it can be with uh, uh, through the standard model. The important thing is their sound speed. As long as they have the, this interaction, that tightly coupled interaction, their sound speed becomes like square root of a third. Then it's, it's, it, can, it doesn't suppress the small scale as much as a free streaming particle. So it, it, as long as you have the more radiation, 
And most of the radiation you have are in, uh, self injection, then you can have the similar effects. Okay, then uh, this anisotropic stress comes in in this equation. Uh, this is just from the continuity equation. And uh, here, uh, phi and psi is the gravitational potentials in the time component and the spatial component. Uh, like different literature defines uh, uh, this gravitational potential differently, and but this is my convention. Uh, followed by one of my favorite books, Gorbunov and Lubakov. And here, uh, some in some literature, phi and psi are uh, uh, changed, and their sign is also different. But this is my convention. And in this convention, if we have only interaction radiation, then our uh, anisotropic sum of anisotropic, anisotropic stress would be zero. Then if this term is zero, then we would have the phi equals to minus phi. So phi and phi have the same magnitude, but uh, with different signs. But in standard model, in addition to the photon, which is uh, interacting radiation, we also have the free streaming radiation, which is neutrino. So actually, psi is uh, the magnitude of psi is different from magnitude of phi by 16%. Of course, this depends on the uh, neutrino uh, energy density ratio, which is around 40%. If we have the more free streaming case, uh, their devi deviation is larger. And finally, uh, these gravitational potentials. Okay. Excuse me, could you go, to, go back to the previous slide? Sure. So where did you get the R mu equals to 0.41? Number you assume or somewhere people measure? Uh, this one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is only assuming the standard model. So if neutrino species has only three species and they have the, uh, they are, they, they're in thermal equilibrium with the photon and they decouple and there's energy injection to the photon, then we, we can calculate the neutrino temperature today and consider the, just this uh, user lambda CDN case, you can uh, uh, theoretically calculate this energy density ratio. And do you assume those neutrinos have mass or? Uh, that doesn't matter for this. It doesn't so matter. Uh, yeah, this neutrino only contribute to the early time to the CMB. So as long as you, uh, you didn't consider very small scale, the neutrino mass doesn't change uh, this, okay. uh, the ratio between the two gravitational potentials. Okay. Thank you. So this psi and phi are functions, psi and phi are functions of eta and x. Uh, eta and x, uh, yeah, in principle, yes, but we normally uh, use the free transform of the uh, phi. So normally what we care is psi in terms of k. That, that's normally what uh, people uh, consider. Uh, but, question, but in principle, yeah, this, this is function of eta and x. So my question is uh, when pi equal, equal to zero, mm -hmm. uh, you say psi equal to minus phi, mm -hmm. but you can add uh, any harmonic functions, which is a solution of the Laplacian equal to zero. Mm -hmm. Right. So the simple reason that you don't add, you don't allow any additional harmonic function. Uh, so you can think about the growing mode and the decreasing mode. And normally uh, you don't consider the decreasing mode. You only consider the growing mode. And if I remember correctly, if you take that uh, solution, then uh, this is always guaranteed. Okay. So the final step, uh, these gravitational uh, potentials have an impact on the photon uh, perturbations and changes the uh, CMB power spectrum. But uh, it's a little, this, this is, this is a, a Boltzmann hierarchy for the photon propagation, but it's a little hard to see the effect from this equation. But the main effect of the, uh, uh, this free streaming radiation is phase shift and the amplitude suppression. And you may saw this before. So this is exactly the same as the, uh, the effect of the addition radiation. So if neutrino have self interaction, then neutrino uh, uh, Boltzmann equation also get this interaction term. And this interaction terms suppress the neutrino anisotropic in the early universe. So and anisotropic stress for the neutrino can only evolve after 
neutrino decouples with uh, if it's self interaction then after decoupling of the self interaction or any other in, uh, any any, if it's any other interaction, but only after uh, they, the interaction decouples, neutrino anisotropic stress evolve. And if, in this, if this case is true, then neutrino also has the, uh, the in, uh, self interaction, and this decreases the effect of the free streaming radiation, which is same as the effect of the additional radiation, then they can compensate with each other. And this might have to uh, solve the Hubble tension. So this is a plot from the crash paper. And x-axis is the uh, uh, CMB moment L, and y-axis is uh, the difference between the lambda CDM case. So here, this uh, uh, black line is the lambda CDM. And this dashed line is a lambda CDM, but n effective equals to 4. And you can see uh, the amplitude suppression, especially for small scales. And there's a phase shift by uh, uh, this oscillating feature. And this red line uh, is the lambda CDM plus self interacting neutrinos. You add some self interaction, but any effect, keep n effective equals to 3. Then you can see uh, this case, they lose the effects of the self free streaming uh, radiation. So amplitude is actually lifted, and you can also see the phase shift. And this red dashed line is you simply combine these two cases. So you just add, uh, you increase the n effective to the four, and you also add the uh, uh, self interaction to the neutrinos. Then this simple uh, addition, you can already see uh, the amplitude is uh, compensated, and there's a little more phase shift. But if you add this two uh, nicely, then you may. Uh, fit to the lambda CDM uh, power spectrum. So this is this was the uh, idea. If you add the uh, surface interaction to the neutrino, then you can increase the n effective, and you may compensate uh, these effects of the addition of radiation. Then you can finally increase the the Hubble parameter today. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in more detail later, but like in this case. Uh, they add the massive myron, so the, the neutrinos are simply interacting by exchanging these myrons. But there's a, these myrons are massive, so they, they are not produced. It only gives a self interaction to the neutrinos. Uh, can you remind us what is the G effective? Uh, G effective, this is the parameter for the neutrino self interaction. I haven't talked about this, uh, but I'm going to talk about this later in more detail. Uh, yeah, this is 10 to minus 2 MeV square. So this is similar to the uh, Fermi uh, constant, but for the neutrino interaction. I'm, I'm going to talk about this in more detail later. So in this case, what are the temperatures for the neutrino and uh, So in this case, neutrino temperature is just, just standard more than neutrino temperature. Yes. Position and radiation. Yeah, I think yeah, this addition radiation, they, they just consider all the N effective is a uh, self interacting neutrino. Mm -hmm. uh, that depends, but in, in their paper, they are claiming that N effective roughly uh, four can resolve the Hubble tension. That, that's their, that was their claim. <laughs> Oh yeah, it can be any any other species, but it needs to be neutrino because if neutrinos are remain just free streaming neutrino, then you have you don't have only uh, room for any effective because one. So if you have more and more self interacting neutrino, you can see more and more effects. So it is important for them to uh, have the self interacting neutrinos. Yeah, if you can remove neutrino and if you make some other self interacting uh, radiation, then it's, it's the same case. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be neutrino, but it needs to have the, uh, this, this large and effective. Really question, how can the self interaction can increase the energy density? 
can increase the energy density. Because ineffective increasing means the uh, energy uh -huh. density of neutrinos are increasing, right? Right. So how can cell leaf interaction increase the energy density? Yeah. So this is more from the silk damping. So yeah, this is uh, this is this doesn't increase the energy density. This is not suppressing the energy density. Of course, we have more energy density. So this is all about the perturbations, and uh, this suppress the uh, the perturbation length. So if there's uh, interactions, so yeah, let's let's talk about the silk damping first. So this is the user case. So if you have the uh, more radiation, then this radiation uh, gives more energy density, and uh, and this this damping is from the the mean pre path of the photon. So if there's a burp and and photon is interact uh, have the interaction in this size of the bulb, then all the perturbation in the in the burp is washed out because of the photon interaction. So photon exchanges energy. So even if there's a, a the hotter uh, spot and the colder spot, but if there's a scattering between them, the perturbation is loosened. So it's not about the energy density, but about the perturbations. Okay, uh, let me briefly, very briefly talk about how to implement uh, this self interaction radiation in class. So this is our user, the Boltzmann hierarchy uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in any other uh, radiation. Then, of course, this class is uh, designed to solve this Boltzmann hierarchy. And we can add these interaction terms. Uh, and, and in this form, which is proportional to the gamma, is called relaxation time approximation. So we add for the second moment and the higher moment, we put uh, this exactly uh, this interaction form. But previous literature often consider uh, this gamma from the dimensional analysis and uh, consider this relaxation time coefficient equals to one. But uh, there's first study to calculate this, uh, this coefficient correctly uh, from these papers. And we developed this and we calculated, we de define uh, the average gamma uh, precisely and in, with this definition. And if there's uh, for the same kind of gamma, which means if gamma uh, has the same temperature dependence, and we found the universal uh, relaxation time coefficient. So uh, for the decoupling mode, which means gamma is proportional to t to the five, and for the recoupling mode and gamma proportional to the just temperature. I'm going to talk about this in more detail, but uh, we found the, the universal relaxation time coefficient, and we uh, for, di for different models, we can just change this average gamma. And the data set we have used, P18 is Planck uh, 2018 data, and Lens is uh, uh, lensing, CMB lensing data from Planck 15, and there's a BAO, and R19 is a supernova uh, measurement from the resetter in uh, 2019. So these are our data set. And uh, using this data set, uh, we can actually uh, the try if the crash paper works uh, in, in, in within this data set. So let me talk about the self interacting neutrinos. Uh, I just assumed the Meyer model, uh, which is a scalar that couples the neutrino. Then uh, this Meyer gives the self interaction to the neutrino. And for the simplicity in our work, uh, we assume the diagonal and universal coupling. So Gij, the coupling here is uh, some coupling G5 times the delta, uh, uh, chronicle delta between i and j. Then neutrinos have the self-interaction by exchanging this myron. And for the light myron case, uh, from, uh, from the dimensional analysis, gamma is just g5 to the 4 times the temperature. However, myron is heavy enough, much heavier than the temperature. Then you can write the effective Lagrangian just uh, similar to the Fermi theory. And uh, we, we can define G nu, which is G5 square over M5 square. And the uh, uh, interaction rate is from the dimensional analysis, we have G nu square times T to the 5. These two cases, lion myron and heavy myron, have very different features in the cosmology. Uh, because uh, we say interaction is active if gamma is larger than the Hubble. And as we all know, Hubble uh, scales as T-square, 
So for the line myelin case uh, where uh, gamma is pro uh, proportional to the temperature and gamma over H increases uh, as temperature decreases. So in the early universe, uh, the, uh, the, the self detection was not effective enough, but in later universe, they are very tightly coupled. So this is the recoupling case. And for heavy myelin, where the gamma is proportional to T2 to the 5, then gamma over H decreases. So in the early universe, they are tightly coupled, and later universe, uh, they start to free stream. So this is the recoupling, uh, sorry, this is a decoupling case. And in uh, my talk, I'm going to focus on this decoupling case. So in this myelin model, uh, there's a lot of uh, experimental constraints, and you can see there's uh, some different shapes. And this uh, flat region comes from the tau decay, and this region from the k on decay, and the, uh, the, the smaller mass region comes from the uh, double beta decay. But you can, as you can see, if myelin couples to only specific, uh, uh, specific neutrino species, then you can elevate the experimental constraints. So uh, in our talk, I'm going to consider the fraction of the interacting neutrino as a free parameter. And I also consider the all neutrino, all self neutrino, neutrino cases, but for the, uh, the smaller uh, constraint, I only, I also consider the fraction of the self interacting neutrino is smaller case as well. So, uh, using, considering this, we have four more, uh, parameters in addition to the six basic cosmological parameter which is an effective free streaming, uh, which is the number of uh, free streaming species, and an effective int, which is number of interacting species, and the total and effective is just sum of those two, and Z decoupling is a decoupling redshift, which it depends on the uh, G effective, and uh, we also have the neutrino mass sum. Okay, and uh, if we put all four new parameters, then that's computationally too heavy, so we uh, fix one of the new parameter and we uh, consider four different cases. But in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, case one and case four, which are uh, most interesting. So case one is the all species uh, uh, interacting. So all of the neutrinos are self-interacting neutrinos. Uh, this is the, this corresponds to the uh, case in the crash paper that I showed you. And so we fix an effective free streaming equals to zero and vary the other uh, three parameters. This is the result, and it's hard to see here, but if we focus on the Hubble, then Hubble uh, for this, uh, they have two different modes, and for this mode, we find the Hubble is just 66 or 67-ish, which is not very different from the Lambda CDM prediction. So, it turns out that self interacting neutrino doesn't have to the Hubble tension. Instead, we can just put the uh, constraint on self uh, the N effective of self interacting neutrinos. So this is clearly different from the result in the crash paper. So main difference uh, from the crash paper and our paper is crash paper used the Planck 2015 data and we have used the Planck uh, 2018 data. And the main difference is they didn't include the higher polarization data because of Planck 15 data has a lot of uncertainties in higher polarization. So they just omit the data, but uh, in Planck uh, 2018, there's no reason to remove this higher polarization. So we add them and we, uh, the previous result I show you is the one we found, but in this analysis, we remove the higher polarization by hand. So to, to see if we have the similar effects, even for the two, uh, Planck 2018 data, we didn't include the higher polarization as they did by hand. And what we found is uh, with our uh, L19 data, we find uh, Planck Hubble constant today is around more than like 71 and even 74 or something. So, so this is only possible if you remove this higher polarization data. This is because higher polarization data have very sharp peaks, and these peaks constrain and effective very tightly. So if you add this higher polarization data, 
even with the self-interesting neutrinos, you cannot increase any effective much. And, and as a result, you don't find a larger Hubble, uh, Hubble parameter today. So it is very important to include the higher polarization. And with this, neutrino, self-interesting neutrino cannot be a solution to the Hubble tension. But, uh, but self-interesting, yep. I'm sorry, do we have one definition of high, high, high L uh, so uh, I don't have that data here. Uh, and so you, you know CMB have the, the temperature temperature autocorrelation, but there's also polarization, E polarization and something like that. And, and there's X axis is normally L, right? So, but in Planck 15 data, I, I forgot the exact number, but L larger than something, it has very uh, large uncertainties. So they didn't include that data. So so, but but Planck, Planck eighteen, they have the uh, like better uncertainties, like smaller uncertainties. So we we have added them. So uh, so still, uh, you know, are interesting. So we can uh, come to the different case. In this case, we fix uh, uh, some of the neutrino masses, and we vary. Both self uh, neutrino, uh, self interesting species, and the free streaming case, and the uh, uh, Z decoupling. So, in this case, uh, we can put some constraints on N effective. And this is a research, and you can see uh, we can put some constraints on N effective interaction. And this is a summary table, but like uh, the research is we find an upper bound on N effective interaction, which, is, which needs to be smaller than. 0.86 with 95% uh, confidential level for the decoupling case. And the, in the case of the fluid like case, which means they never decouple, so neutrinos remains the fluid or at all time. In this case, uh, we find the upper bound, which is 0.01. Okay, uh, there's a small remark on uh, SA tension or sigma A tension. So this uh, triangle is, uh, we have the parameter S8. And this part uh, is the prepared region by measurement. And this is uh, our uh, research. Uh, the, the Planck, just, just uh, standard model case is the red, uh, which you have still, uh, there's small tension. But you can see uh, this case one doesn't have to resolve this tension much. If uh, we still have the tension, but with case four, we have a small overlap. This doesn't have to reserve the uh, SA tension much, but uh, if we have the fluid-like particle, it helps a little bit, but not that much. Okay, now we can turn to the self-interacting dark radiation. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this case very briefly. And we classify the dark radiation into three different uh, 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 kinds. And first kind is decoupling. So this dark radiation is tightly coupled in the early universe and uh, free streaming in the later universe, just as uh, self-interacting neutrinos. So uh, we use the same Myron model and the exact interaction rate uh, is given by this, which is proportional to T to the five. And we can think about the instantaneous decoupling just as like photon. So photon uh, uh, start to free stream suddenly uh, after the hydrogen forms. So in dark baryon or dark atom model, uh, we, we can have the similar uh, decoupling. Uh, then the injection rate is proportional to exponential of some binding energy or confinement energy over the temperature. For this case, we use just a transition function uh, to suppress the anisotropic stress. And the last case is recoupling case where the particles are uh, uh, free streaming in the early universe and tightly coupled in the later universe. And we use a, a five-fold theory. And in this case, the average uh, rate is proportional to the temperature. Actually, okay, about the G effect. Mm -hmm. So how do you compare with the, with the Fermi constant? So this G, this G effective, like, if it's for the neutrino self interaction, it can be much, much larger than the Fermi constant. Yeah, to, to have some effect, of course, it needs to be larger. From the Fermi constant, 
So the the one uh, in the paper is like yeah some viral masses around suburb tens of or hundreds of MeV. So G effective uh, is order of like ten to the minus two, ten to the minus three MeV to the minus two. Uh, the, of course, uh, in that validation cases, we leave the neutrino as a standard model neutrino. So neutrinos are free streaming, and we only add the dark radiation, which has this uh, some specific kind of couplings. So in, for the safely interacting neutrino case, it has actually more effect because you have the more uh, interacting radiations. But here, we fix the neutrino as free streaming, and we add some uh, dark radiation. So neutrino is still standard model neutrino, but like if there is some other model that couples to the standard model earlier or something like that, then uh, we can think of additional radiation. So this is all about the additional radiation. So in previous uh, you also also the case where we partial neutrino. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it, yeah, it's kind of similar, but it doesn't agree with each other perfectly because like previous case, the safety interesting neutrino ratio and the, uh, the free streaming neutrino ratio, they are free parameters. So it can be anything, but in this case, we fix free streaming neutrino equals to three, and we have the additional particle, and we have a different kind of the interactions, not only the decoupling, but also instantaneous decoupling and the recoupling case as well. Okay, and uh, if you look at the anisotropic stresses, and uh, this y-axis is the uh, anisotropic stress, and here I use uh, notation sigma instead of pi, and uh, the, our dark radiation over the free streaming case, which is a neutrino, and, and uh, x-axis is uh, uh, the redshift. And you can see the if anisotropic stress is suppressed, and that's the uh, dark radiation is self-interacting because self-interacting radiation suppresses the anisotropic stress, I, I, as I mentioned. And if the uh, anisotropic stress over uh, anisotropic stress at free streaming is around one, which means anisotropic stress is not suppressed, then this means that radiation is free streaming. And you can see for the decoupling case in our model, uh, the uh, part uh, this radiation is uh, self-interacting and becomes the, uh, uh, free streaming later. And for the recoupling case, uh, this test from the free streaming and they are coupled later. And for the instantaneous decoupling, it suddenly starts to uh, become uh, free streaming. So and different controls is for different uh, Z decoupling or Z recoupling here. And our brief wizard. Uh, as you can see here, we found actually no statistical, statistically significant circumstance on couplings on DR. So these are couplings, and you see that there's a slight preference, but most of them are not ruled out. So they are not ruled out here. So most of the couplings are allowed. Uh, couplings for the self injection. So this is couplings to themselves. Yeah, radiation self interaction coupling. So depending on the self interaction couplings, it uh, it determines when they decouple or when they recouple. So from uh, from this analysis, uh, CMB doesn't have preference of the decoupling time or recoupling time that much. But this is mainly because uh, their ineffective can be uh, uh, much smaller. Their ineffective is like only allowed like 0.1 or 0.2-ish, and in, in, in this smaller delta ineffective, uh, this coupling or recoupling uh, uh, effect doesn't give much changes on CMD power spectrum. That, that's one main reason why we don't have any constraint, but still, we have a slight preference uh, for the fluid-like case. So CMB uh, prefers the interacting radiation a little more than the free streaming uh, radiation, but not that much. Okay, uh, let me conclude. Uh, self-interacting radiation leave different imprints on cosmological observables, 
uh, compared to the free streaming radiation. And saponitric neutrino was proposed as a solution to the Hopf tension, but it's not true with the high L polarization data. So instead, we put on constraints on uh, saponitric neutrinos and dark like radiations, especially on the coupling parameter and the uh, uh, ineffective interacting. Thank you very much. Much for the nice talk. Any question? Oh, thank you very much. So, in your talk, you did not mention anything about dark matter. Right? Yeah. So in my talk, our dark radiation doesn't have the interaction to the dark matter. Dark matter remains a poor dark matter, and we only consider the interaction between the radiation. But yeah, there are a lot of studies the, uh, that give interaction between dark matter and the dark radiation. And some, like a few model uh, says that uh, they actually have to solve the Hubble tension. Um, in the case of the self-interacting neutrino, in the mm -hmm. second case, mm -hmm. when you fix the sum of the neutrino masses to be 0.1, mm -hmm. How sensitive is it if you if you were to decrease the sum of the neutrino masses? So we haven't tried that. So we have some different cases where uh, we fix the free streaming uh, neutrino case, and then uh, we fix we leave the the, the neutrino mass sum equals to three. But like the there, we still didn't find very uh, specific preference. We just we just put the constraint on an effective. But an effective constraint of the upper bound is a little bit different if you can vary the neutrino mass. I see. Okay. So so how your conclusion on the I mean in second conclusion on once you once we add a high L mm -hmm. data to uh, constraints uh, the Hubble tension it doesn't work so. So is it only for the self-interacting neutrino case or have some general occasions on the solution which use the data and effective? So, so we, we only tested the, this case self-interacting neutrino, but I think this is generally true. So higher polarization have very sharp peaks. So with the higher polarization data, it's hard to uh, change the ineffective, but, right. but there, there can be a way to make it work, but like generally, it, it, it would be much harder uh, with a higher polarization data okay. to increase any effective. Okay. So just in the second case, the typical order mass of the myron is in, I mean, what is the typical order of mass? Of so myrons? for the decoupling case, the mass of myron should be uh, much larger than the neutrino decoupling temperature. So normally think about like 10 or 100 MeV each. So, so because I'm, I'm just confused because then what's the source of this extra delta N effective you're having at the time of CMB? So, I mean, what's the source of this extra delta N effective? So, so we didn't consider the production of this radiation, but like you can think about some uh, more particles in the neutrino sector and they come in the uh, thermal equilibrium and decouple, then that changes the N effective of the neutrino sector actually. So you can think about this scenario or you can think about some other scenario that uh, makes uh, uh, that, that that changes the effective of the neutrino sector. Oh, okay. But, so, but we, we haven't considered uh, in this case. We just live in the free parameter in the analysis. Okay. Yeah, but but there are uh, papers that talks about how to change the effective in the neutrino sector. Okay. And this uh, effect, the efficient neutrinos be very energetic. Uh, so normally in this case, they, they need to be thermal. They are thermal neutrinos, so their energy is like order of their temperature. So this myron was never in thermal equilibrium. Sorry? This myron was never in thermal equilibrium? Or? Yeah, in, in the decoupling case, myron never in the thermal equilibrium. But actually in the recoupling case, myron needs to be very light because you need to have light myrons to have the, uh, this recoupling feature. So in the study of the light myrons, actually you consider the production of myrons and uh, uh, have the thermal equilibrium and even the freeze out of the myrons. They, they, con they do consider those and actually the light myron case uh, fits better to the CMB and the R19 data. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So what is the coupling 
Lắm đâu ở bên là recoupling lắm the the coupling lambda that normally they consider lambda tensor uh, uh, in the recoupling case lambda considered to be like tensor minus 13 ish because yeah because like this recoupling or decoupling time is near the matter to, uh, radiation equality if if that recoupling or decoupling happens near that time that gives up the most effect so make it work then lambda needs to be super small otherwise uh yeah, 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 it's all just all coupled, like for all time. Any other question? Any other question from Zoom? Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you.